Thank you very much indeed for now. Talking about big audiences, <laughs> should we talk now about one of the most popular shows ever on television wow. in the world? And this year, a whopping 161 million people tuned in to watch Ukraine win the Eurovision Song Contest. And for the UK's Sam Ryder, we love him too, he came second. We love him. And now, sadly, the war means that Ukraine is unable to hold next year's event. So there's been a bit of speculation over the last few weeks, but we now know that those duties, those hosting duties, have been passed on to us, to the UK. And already, cities across the country are competing to host it. The London Mayor, Sadiq Khan, tweeted that the UK capital would be honoured to put on a contest that celebrates the people of Ukraine and shows off the very best of Britain. Secretary of State for Scotland, Alistair Jack, tweeted that uh, with our rich musical history, Scotland would be a fantastic place to host the contest. Lots of money on Glasgow, isn't there? Yeah. Mm. Greater Manchester's nighttime economy advisor, Sasha Lord, was also keen. He tweeted, there is no better city than Manchester to hold this. Nobody seems to agree, do they? <laughs> yeah, nobody agrees. Uh, and in Wales, the leader of Cardiff Council, Hugh Thomas, said, uh, we know Cardiff could host a fantastic event and bring Eurovision to Wales, the land of song. But hang on a minute. Oh, not another one. <laughs> yeah, from Leeds, the council there said, hosting Eurovision midway through the Leeds 2023 year of culture, you know it makes sense. Basically... Everybody wants it. <laughs> yes. Everybody wants it. You can see why, because it's a huge investment opportunity, uh, a profile opportunity, but who's going to get it? Well, we're joined now by Cheryl Baker, who, of course, won the Eurovision Song Contest with Box Fizz in 1981, and the presenter, Scott Mills. Morning to you both. Cheryl, I'm going to come to you first. Where do you think it should go? It needs to go to a city where there's an international airport, where they've got a venue that's big enough, uh, where there are enough hotels. So any one of those would work. I think it would be nice if it didn't go to London, if it went to, although for me, I live in Kent, you know, I'm half an hour from London. So for me, that would be perfect. But it would be nice if it went to a regional. I think I quite like, I, fa I fancy Cardiff. I think that would be nice, like you say, the land of song. And Cheryl, how significant is it for the event to just come to the UK at all? I think it's fantastic. I mean, it, it, it's just, it's the biggest musical extravaganza in the world and it happens once a year and it's coming to the UK. And I think actually as well, you know, we came second to the Ukraine. It, it kind of makes sense that it comes here rather than anywhere else. Of, obviously it can't go to Ukraine. And I think it would be lovely for us to host it on behalf of Ukraine, as long as the Ukraine are completely involved, as long as they, their presenters, we're basically giving them the shell to do it, uh, in my opinion. I think their production teams and their presenters and everything should be totally involved. It's just like we're giving them the venue to use. And that's what I think. Scott, I mean, you, you were there for that moment when Ukraine won this year, but now sadly can't host it. So I'm um, it's kind of bittersweet, isn't it, the fact that uh, it's coming to the UK? It is bittersweet. Uh, it's also a, a huge privilege. Um, the fans, just from uh, reading stuff online, obviously regret that Ukraine can't host. But um, to the fans, as Cheryl said, I think it's vitally important that they're as involved as they possibly can be. And and. And it's been said that this really will be a reflection of Ukrainian culture, resulting in what I hope will uh, be a, a week of shows, wherever it is, when the UK is able to show another outpouring of love for Ukraine. Catherine has got in touch on Twitter. She says Southampton or Portsmouth or Bournemouth. I think Catherine might live on the south coast of England, maybe. Uh, Peter suggesting Butlins in Minehead in Somerset. Where, <laughs> where, where do you reckon? Where's Scott, what would be your choice? Well, I mean, <laughs> Butlins is funny. Um, <laughs> literally everyone has uh, tweeted an interest, but that's unofficial. Uh, cities are being invited to apply officially from this week, but we've got Aberdeen, Belfast, Birmingham, Brighton, Bristol, Cardiff, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Manchester. I'm going to do the full list. <laughs> Leeds, Liverpool, London, Newcastle, Nottingham, Sheffield, Wolverhampton and Swindon pulled out last night saying they can't do it. And in alphabetical order as well. That's really impressive. Yeah. Thank That's you. great, Scott. Well done. <laughs> Cheryl, um, we, we can't resist the opportunity to show you and Box Fizz in your glorious moments. Look, we're watching it right now. 
just tell us all, what's so special about Eurovision? Why, what makes it, apart from that moment where they just rip your skirts off there, what, what makes it so special for everyone at home and for the people taking part? It's the World Cup of music. It's the Olympics of music, you know, once a year. And, but the lovely thing about the Eurovision is it's a great big happy love fest. Everybody, I mean, if you go to the Eurovision, which I've been several times and, and absolutely will be there next year, um, it's just the most wonderful, glorious, happy occasion. Everyone cheers everyone else on. It's just, I, I, and as you said earlier, 161 million people. It's not just the UK. It's not just Europe. It's the rest of the world. They love it. And, and it's a great honour that the UK are going to host it next year. Scott, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? Because it's, it's not going to be a normal, not that Eurovision is ever normal, but it's going to be a very <laughs> different kind of Eurovision. The fact that we're hosting it, sadly, because Ukraine can't, we're trying to give it the, the flavour of another country, even though we're proud to hold it. it it's going to be a difficult juggling act for, for whoever and wherever it's hosted. It is, um, but I'm... Absolutely confident that the BBC and the Ukrainian broadcaster will do a brilliant job. As we know, Sam was amazing last year. I actually messaged him yesterday to say, I can't believe it. And he hadn't heard the news. So he just put a question mark. <laughs> and then I sent him the press release and uh, the reply was, OMG. But um, thank God for that. everything that Sam Ryder and the UK campaign did last year, along with the galvanisation of the fans, earned the UK this this very unusual opportunity. Totally. Well, look, I mean, we've now got not just big cities and national capitals getting in touch. Ampt Hill in Bedfordshire, okay. uh, somebody wants to go for. They could combine it with their summer music festival as well, apparently, same weekend. <laughs> so um, everyone's a bit of that Eurovision entry. Could you have it in different places, and like, uh, like across the country? No, that'd be too complicated. No, I don't think so, John. Let, let, let's not start that one, shall we? <laughs> Thank you both for joining us this morning. We'll speak to you again when we know. It's exciting. It is. Should it we is. go? Let's go. Always, yes. Imagine if I know somebody, you know somebody, I'll tell you in a minute, who is one of our presenters who's already booking uh, hotel rooms in several different places that weekend trying to hedge their bets. Where... Are you sure? Oh, yeah, do we totally. know someone? Yeah, we do. Oh, okay. I'll tell you in a second. Yeah. It's not him, but he might be. <laughs> Are you sure?